Hello there. Uh, this is week number four of the beginner's guitar class. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be learning some more chords of our essential ten. Okay? And then I'm going to teach you some new method of reading for guitar players that you can use out on the internet that will coincide with what I talked about on last week's video. Okay? So let's go ahead and just start off by making sure we're in tune. I'm going to pluck each string for you and I want you to tune to them. Here is your sixth string, which is E. Your fifth string, which is A. Your fourth string, D. Your third string, G. And your second string, which is B. And your first string, which is E again. Okay, so moving on with our open chords, the next chord we have in the sequence is a C chord, and C chord is an incredibly important chord for us. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Again, you'll have a chart up on your screen that will show you what the C chord looks like. You're going to take your ring finger or third finger and you're going to place it on the fifth string, third fret. Then you're going to place your middle finger on the fourth string, second fret. You're going to skip the third string, and then you're going to put your first finger on the second string, first fret. And in this particular chord, you can strum the bottom five strings. Again, you want to stay away from that sixth string at this point. All right. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Okay, so make sure you've got that C. Make sure your fingers are on the correct strings. Okay, make sure your wrist is down. And you're only touching one string at a time. Remember, each finger should be on its own string, and it should not be touching anything else. Okay? So let's go ahead and give this a strum. We're going to start by just strumming down to this. One, two, ready, go. Down, down. Try and add some ups only. Okay? So remember, there's three things that you can do. You can go between the down strum, you can go to the down up strums, you can do just the up strums, and then ultimately you want to be able to combine those three elements into a variety of different rhythms by simply hitting and missing various different things. You can create different rhythm patterns that way, okay? So that's what we're going to work on, is just that C chord, trying to get comfortable with hitting the bottom five. And the same rule that I've said in every video up to this point, you can always strum less, but you can't strum more. So please remember on a C chord, you've got a five string uh, a maximum capacity that you can use on your strumming. You can always strum less. If you accidentally only strum four or three or something like that, you're still perfectly fine. You just don't want to hit that top six string because it sounds kind of ugly. Okay? So there is our C chord. Now let's move on to the next chord of the sequence, which is an F chord. Now F chord for many people is um, a, an unfriendly chord. So let's take a look at this and let me give you some tips on what you might be able to do here. Okay? So with an F chord, what you're going to have to do is you're going to take your index finger and you're going to press over the bottom two strings at the same time. So you have to squeeze against both those at the same time. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at that chart and I'll show you how the rest of that goes. So you'll see in the chart that you're pressing on those two strings at the same time with your first finger. Okay, then we're going to move on to the third string, which your middle finger is going to go on, on the second fret. And then your third finger is going to go on the, the uh, fourth string, but at the third fret. So it kind of looks like a C chord. The difference being here is that you're just pressing on the bottom four strings. So with this F chord, you only want to strum those bottom four strings. OK, 
Okay, so let's take a look at this F chord. So I'm pressing on the two here, I got my middle finger on the third string, and I got my ring finger on the fourth string. Now, there's a couple things that you can try with this. You know, all the chords that we've been talking about, we've been talking about keeping the wrist in a downward position, so it's, it's easier to make sure you're only touching the proper strings. And with this chord, it's certainly no different. Um, the thing you want to watch out for is your elbow, though. If your elbow is out kind of like this, it's really hard to make that chord because if you think about it, when you're turned this direction, these little fingers are so far down here that it's hard to reach them anywhere. You have to like try and curl over. But if you take the elbow and you move it in towards your, your stomach, okay, you turn. You see how I'm turning the wrist in like that? If I turn in a little bit, now it makes it easier to try and reach those because this finger can reach higher. When I'm like this, I can't reach there. But if I turn in this way, I can. Okay? The other thing that sometimes helps people is if they do the opposite of what we normally do, which is grabbing onto the guitar more like this. If you bring the wrist up, sometimes it's easier to try and press on those top two strings, at, or those, those first two strings here at the same time. And that's entirely up to you. It's just going to take some time. Uh, either way, though, having the elbow out this direction makes it very difficult. If you turn in like this, it's going to make it a lot easier for you. Okay? So this is what an F chord should sound like. It's going to be a little less full than other chords because you're only using four strings like the D chord does. Um, but that's the way the chord is created. So we've got a C chord, we've got an F chord. And the nice thing between the C and the F is all you really have to do from, to get from C to F, and of course we've talked about bouncing and all those sorts of things, but visually if you think about it, you're just dropping these two fingers down and then you're pressing on the bottom. So you're kind of curling in and pressing. So my first finger really doesn't have to leave the, the second string, I'm just going to drop these two fingers down and then kind of press down on that first string. So that's an easy way for me to get from C to F. And luckily those two chords are used in conjunction with each other quite often. So, but don't forget about the basic rules of visualization and bouncing and, you know, quality of chords picking through. Make sure all the notes are working and all those sorts of things. The essential elements of, of learning how to play those chords. So, up to this point we have a, D, E, G, A minor, E minor, and F and C. So we're getting there. Okay, we have eight now, eight very useful chords that we can use. We've talked about how to use the capo. We've talked about various scratching techniques that you could do to songs to develop your right arm. Um, so we just need to keep going here. So the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to start talking about a method of reading called tablature or simply put, it's called tab. Now, last week I was telling you about uh, some websites that you could go visit for various reasons, uh, a site for metronomes and, and things like that. One of the sites that I told you about was called Ultimate Guitar, and it really is a, a, a real comprehensive site for guitar players to want to learn how to play music. Um, it doesn't cost anything. Um, you can pay them a monthly subscription if you don't want um, you know, advertisements and things like that, but you certainly don't have to. So anyway, what happens is when you go there, if you've started looking around on Ultimate Guitar, let's say you typed in the name of an artist or you know, the name of a song or something, and you started looking at it, I was telling you about how you could look at the name of it, but you're going to realize that there's, there, for many songs, there's a bunch of different versions of that song. So then as we move over into the columns, we see how many stars they have. Uh, we want the most stars, you know, five stars is, is what we're looking for with the song. And then we also want the number of votes. So the more votes there are, the more popular or the more relevant that song is um, in terms of its accuracy. Okay, But when you, we get over to the far right hand column, it says uh, there, there are various formats like we were talking about like chords and tab and uh, guitar pro and power tab and bass and all kinds of things. Well now we're talking about tab. Okay, So what tab is, tablature, is a method of reading for the guitar in which you are not reading the staff. You are not reading note names. Okay? And that's kind of confusing to people when they first see it. Um, tablature is a much more simplistic way of reading across your fretboard than learning how to read notes. Now, that doesn't negate the importance of learning how to read notes. Okay? It's just another alternative to learning how to read notes. Tablature is not a modern, uh, you know, created element. Tablature has been around for a very long time. If you know anything about 
uh, notation, if you've ever read, you know, every good bow is fine and that sort of thing on other instruments, you'll know that, for instance, on a piano, if we go to a piano and we play a middle C on the piano, okay, we only have one middle C. We have other octaves of that C, but we only have one middle C. Well, on the guitar, because our strings, we have six strings that overlap, if you think about it, it's almost like having six pianos, and they're, they're lined up so you could go this way, not just this way like a regular piano, but you can go depth-wise too, right? That's what the six strings are. But they're not all sitting straight. The pianos aren't lined up. They're kind of off-center from each other. Well, that's what's happening on a guitar, and as a result of that, we have more than one middle C. We have all kinds of different octaves, you know, the same, not octave, excuse me, the, the unison of the same note. Okay, so we can play the same note on multiple different strings, and so what got confusing with standard notation was it told us what to play, but it didn't tell us where to play it. Where on a piano, they don't have that, that problem. So that's where tablature was invented, was to create a system in which you knew where you were supposed to play. And so what you're doing when you look at tablature, and I'll pull up a, a chart here for you to look at, you'll see that there are six lines instead of five. Now those six lines are directly representing your six guitar strings. So when you're looking at those six lines, you're literally looking at your six guitar strings out in front of you. It's like a guitar is sitting right out in front of you. Okay? The lowest line, the line towards the floor, is your sixth or thickest string. The line at the top is your first or thinnest string. So it's like the guitar is out in front of you and it's facing you. You're holding the guitar out in front of you and you're looking at, at the neck. You flip the guitar over and you're looking at it. Now, there's a couple reasons why it might be that way because I always get someone that will go, why is it written like that? Why isn't it written the other way? You know, I don't know why is left, left, and right, right? Why wasn't right, left, and, and so on? We just have to accept it for what it is. I think the basic premise was, if you think about standard notation, you think about the staff, the lowest notes on a staff are toward the bottom, and the highest notes on a staff are toward the top. And I think that's the same thing that's happening here. The lowest notes are on the bottom, because that's your sixth string, and the highest notes are on the top, which is your first string. Now all you're going to do is you're going to read left to right, just like on a staff. So if you see a number on that staff, the number is referring to the fret that the music wants you to play. So if there is a one, you would play the first fret. If that one was written on the sixth string, you would play first fret of the sixth string. It's pretty easy. What it does not tell you is what fingers you will be using. Okay? So tablature introduces you to the ability of playing single notes not just chords and strumming multiple strings, but actually playing single strings, okay? So if I have a number written on there, that's the fret I'm going to play. I can have 5th fret, I could have ninth fret, I could have 12th fret, I could have 15th fret. I could also have 0 fret. 0 is simply plucking the string open. So if you think about 0 as being an O, you're just plucking that string open. Okay, so for instance, if I had a zero on the sixth string, I would pluck the sixth string once. If it was written zero, zero, zero on the sixth string, I would play zero, zero, zero. So, tablature is telling us what fret to play, it's telling us what string to play it on, and it is also going to tell us how many times to play it. So if a number is written twice, then you would play that note twice. If a number is written five times, you would play that note five times. Okay? So all you really have to get comfortable with is the fact that what you are looking at are your six strings out in front of you. You're reading left to right, and the numbers are telling you what fret you are going to play. They are not telling you fingers. That's what I'm here for, is to try and help you with that. Um, that's one of the battles of guitar playing is learning when you do play single notes what fingers you should be using and why Okay, but right now you're just kind of exploring it. You're trying to learn how to read it So some really great ideas of songs that you could look up on on this ultimate guitar website with the tab Would be something like for instance pretty woman by Roy Orbison if you've ever heard that song before It's got a real distinguishing intro 
okay? So when you look that up, you're going to try and look up Pretty Woman or you're going to look up Roy Orbison and find Pretty Woman. Then you're going to try and find the version that says tab, not chords, but tab. And then you're going to try and find the best version with the most votes with the most stars. And then you're going to start looking at that and figuring out how to play it. Now, needless to say, when you're trying to learn how to play a song, the most important thing is that you know how the song is supposed to sound. Because in looking at this tablature, the other thing you're going to notice that you do not have is uh, rhythm values. There's no quarter notes or eighth notes or anything like that. It doesn't say anything. So you have to have an idea in your mind what something sounds like when you grab the tablature and are going to start playing it because it doesn't tell you anything about the rhythm of it. It just tells you how it goes, but it doesn't tell you uh, what the rhythms do. So, for instance, with the beginning of Pretty Woman, you would go over to YouTube, as we discussed last week. You could pull up Pretty Woman by Roy Orbison. You could listen to just the intro of it, listen to it a few times, get it straight in your head. You could come back over to Ultimate Guitar. You could start looking at that, and maybe you're even listening to the song while you're looking at the tab, and you're trying to figure it out, and then you rewind it, and then you rewind it over and over and over, and you start kind of creating a visual picture in your head of what that's going to look like, okay? So that's how tablature is going to work. And uh, so the, the big thing now is that you'd be able to choose songs that have chords, and you would also be able to choose songs that have tab, okay? The other thing that's nice about the chords is that we talked about last week, uh, there's a website that you can go to as well uh, where you can look up chord charts. So if there's a chord that you don't know, you can always go there and check. Now, Ultimate Guitar has its own kind of versions of chords uh, written at the top of the pages, but I honestly would recommend you not using some of those because a lot of those are incorrect. Um, if you have no other choice, then that's fine. Um, but if you always have the choice of either A, asking somebody, or B, looking it up on the, uh, on the website, that's definitely what I would do. All right, so let's start slowly putting together some of these chords that we've got, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start just looking at like three chords that go together. And as you start learning how to play a lot of songs, you're going to start realizing that these are very common things. Now next week we're going to talk about why they're common and how that works. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off by playing a G chord. And then we're going to go to our newly created C chord. And then we're going to go to our D chord, which is the bottom four strings. And then back to our G. Right there, that chord progression is one of the single most common chord progressions in the history of music, is G, C, and D. Those chords go together constantly. So the great thing that you start realizing along the way here is not only are you learning how to play chords, but you're understanding a bit about how music works. Not because you understand music theory, but because you understand music logic. If you're learning how to play songs and you find that 50 songs that you're learning use the same chords over and over and over, obviously you want to be aware of the fact that there's a pattern there. And there is. Okay? So when it comes to songwriting, when artists write songs, they know what chords go with other chords really well. So in this case, we're looking at G and C and D. Those three chords are like brothers. They go together all the time. Okay? So as you start practicing bouncing, with all of these chords that we've talked about, we've got eight of them now. Another thing that you can start doing is start getting really comfortable with finding a relationship between those three brothers, between G, C, and D, and really getting comfortable being able to play those back and forth, because they are going to be used together all the time. Okay? So we've got our G chord, we've got our C chord, we've got our D chord, and then back to our G chord. Now again, this week you're going to be working on that C, trying to develop it. So the big thing here is, is that I'm learning how to switch those chords, and I'm learning how to strum it. Okay? Well, what I'm going to introduce you to now is a style of music called the 12-bar blues, or the blues. There are various uh, genres of music out there, you know, rock and pop and country and classical and jazz and metal and certainly blues. Um, blues is something that's kind of fun, and again, this is going to tag into next week's uh, practice, but I just want you to start thinking about this a little bit. Okay, 12-bar blues is a 12-measure sequence. That's what 12-bar means. Blues is the style of music it is. 
Now, blues is really the only style of music out there that really does the same 12 bar or 12 measure progression over and over and over. Most songs have a verse and a chorus, if you know what those are. A verse is the part that tells the story to the song, and a chorus is the part that we all sing along with where the words tend to stay the same. In verses, they tend to change constantly. Um, a song might have a bridge or a pre-chorus and all kinds of different things like that. In blues, it really kind of is just that same 12 measure sequence that just gets repeated over and over and over. So what I want you to start thinking about is the fact that to play a 12 bar blues, we would have the chords G and C and D, and those would go together um, to play this progression. So I want you to follow me. What we're going to be doing today to begin this journey of the blues is we're just going to start talking about the blues rhythm. Okay? So up to this point, in all the classes that we've had, we've talked about downs and ups that do this. Right? And we make up various things. Now, with the blues, it's a little different because in the blues, you get a different kind of rhythm. It's, it's a blues rhythm. Um, we can call it a heartbeat. Some people think of it like a, a horse trotting, okay? Anything like that. But what's happening is instead of them being even, one and two and three and four and one, they don't do that. They go one and two and three and four and one and two and three. So what I want you to do is make me that G chord, and I want you to play me that rhythm. So we're going... Okay? So what's happening there, if you think about it, my down strum is longer than my up strum. I'm going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So my up is coming back really quick and going back down. Now there's two ways that you can think about this. First way is to do exactly what I'm saying right now, is to drop your down kind of like it's heavy, and then you gotta lift and drop again. So you have. So you're actually kind of waiting at the bottom for a little bit to come back up, okay? The other thing that works really well for people is, is a visual tool. If you think of it this way, if I was strumming an even amount, if I was strumming from this point on the top and this point on the bottom, I would get an even strum. Which makes sense. But let's say I shift it down, so now I'm strumming from right above the sixth string to way down here. I'm still strumming even in terms of my arm movement, but because there's so much more space down here, watch what it sounds like. If the strings were located right here, it would be even. But because the strings are right here and my strum is going all the way down here, it's creating this blues rhythm. So you're either feeling it by stopping, or if it helps you, just travel all the way down here and then come right back up to this point. Either way works just fine. You're creating that Traditional blues usually sound something like this. Kind of like that, okay? So you can hear that boom, 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 boom kind of sound. Okay, that's what's happening with that rhythm. So for the first time, we have created a different um, subdivision of rhythm. You still have your downs, you still have your ups and everything, but it feels different. Okay? And for those of you that might be wondering why, it's because the rhythms that we've been playing all the way up to this point have been based off of quarter notes and eighth notes and sixteenths and so on. These are based off triplets, if you've ever heard of a triplet. And if you have it, don't even worry about it. It's perfectly fine. But if you have, what's happening is you're taking a triplet, and you're just skipping the middle one. That's how it's created. Now on guitar, we strum it differently than, than the triplet thing because we're, we're not playing that middle one. But that's where the rhythm is coming from. So here's the great part. Every rhythm that you'll ever play for any song 
is going to be, be based off of that first feel that we've done up to this, this lesson, or it's going to be based off this new feel, this blues feel. Okay? So we can call the old feel, the other one, even. It's even. Dun, 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 dun. It's like marching. And then we can create you know, rhythms over the top of that. The new one is going to be called odd, because it's not based off an even number. It's based off an odd number. It's based off three. So when you're listening to a song, if you can think in your head, it's an even number. If you feel... going to be an odd number, okay? Now, let's be honest, most songs that you're going to play are more going to be based off an even rhythm than they would an odd rhythm, but I want you to be aware of that, and most importantly, I want you to be able to play, physically play the difference. So if somebody's listening to you, they can hear the difference between and and that, okay? So let's go ahead and work on all of those elements for this week. Uh, please make sure that you are practicing on a daily basis. Please make sure that you're really trying to listen to these things. Um, you're, you're paying attention to the details. Um, and just keep working towards this, uh, this goal of learning how to play guitar.